What's happening guys? So this week I thought we'd talk about rinsing and the importance of rinsing. There's a lot of different ways to do it and there's some nuance to how it's done. I mean, there's the top down rinse, there's the bottom up rinse, closeness of the rinse, you know, how far you are away from the surface, how much PSI you have. All these things come together to make a big impact when you're trying to do a touchless wash. Of course, there's moments where you're not doing a touchless wash and then you rinse a little differently. So I figured we'd get into that because I do see a lot of controversy online. I see a lot of people get very upset when they see someone rinse the opposite way from how they do it. And it's really not as cut and dry as that. There's moments where it's right to do it one way, moments, moments where it's right to do it the other way. So let's get into that topic and I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. The first question I think about you know, how you're gonna rinse is what are you doing a touchless wash or are you doing a mitt or a God forbid I say a brush wash, you know what I mean? Like is it a friction wash or is it a non-contact wash? Because a non-contact wash, you're gonna have to rinse a little better, as a matter of fact, 100% better than if you do any other kind of physical touching to a vehicle. The rinse becomes only about getting the soap off. But if you're doing a touchless wash, there's a couple of different factors you gotta think about when it comes to how you rinse. This right here, this is, check this out. This is uh, me in the middle here, right? That thing that I'm holding there, that's actually, uh, hold on, I've got one. Now the reason I bring this in is because this injects soap a little differently than most people are familiar with these days. This was a system that my father sold when I was, before I was born actually. Forward would be your step one, back would be your step two, and then the middle would be rinse, right? And then this would turn on and off the motor. The significance of this kind of system, the power washer that these, this would run, would inject those soaps before the pump, which is called upstream injection, which means that the soap would come out like hard. I mean, it would come out 2,000 PSI, four or five gallons per minute. It would really hit hard. So you're driving that soap into the road film, blasting the vehicle with the soap. Then when you would go to rinse in the center position here, you would still stay at the same PSI and the gallons per minute. But the only goal at that point was to get the soap off of the vehicle. So the point was to go fast, right? So you would rinse top down with this system and it didn't matter how you rinsed other than just get the soap off the vehicle. And the soaps were really harsh. So we used to use hydrofluoric acid was what we would blend when I was a little kid. Man, that stuff was nasty. And so you didn't want to let that dry. The goal is to get the soap off as fast as possible. So that was a top down touchless rinse. There's systems like this to this day, but you know, generally this is not accessible to most people. These are very expensive systems. And so it was kind of limited who could get them. Usually we only dealt with big companies, you know, but some years ago, um, I designed a system where we'd use foam cans. So this thing is from last week's video. This is pretty cool because uh, what this did was this opened up the concept to everybody. So now you've got this uh, ability to just switch two foam cannons out. You have your pre-soak on one, the, pre the neutralizer on the other side. And then, uh, you know, this made it accessible for everyone who has a power washer of any kind to do the process. Now, the difference is these foam cannons, man, they don't really hit hard. You know, they just kind of they just gently place a thick sort of amount of soap for a good amount of time. It's nice because it has more dwell time. But you really don't have that impact, that drive coming out where you're gonna do some really serious pushing into the road film and remove that during the foam or during the foam application process. With this kind of system, you put on the two soaps, they shock each other neutral, which helps loosen up the dirt, but you really have to rinse good. And uh, that's when you start working with the soap. So now I find it more helpful to rinse from the bottom up. Now, not everybody does that, and it's not as satisfying to watch, and it looks like you're washing your ass before your face. The thing is that it does help you kind of scrub into the soap and interact the pressure with the soap on the surface. And at the same time, it gives you a little bit of a gauge so that you can see where you've been with the pressure. Because if you don't get everywhere with the pressure, it's like missing a spot with a mitt, for example. It's basically replacing the physical contact. But that impact of the pressure is very important. And you do want to stay kind of close. You know, you want to get in there real good, especially on the front facing surfaces. I think it's very important that when you're, when you're trying to get the bugs off of there and some of the road film seems to grab a little harder on the front facing stuff. So I usually get a little closer, you know, at least within six inches, you know, unless you have a massive power washer and you don't want to damage something. But I like to get in real close to get the bugs and all of that stuff off. And then in general, I stay maybe a foot away from the surface. If you get too far away with your pressure, 
you know, you're not gonna have the impact that you need to get it clean. So this is what happens when you don't either rinse close enough or with high enough PSI, or if the soap isn't coming out as strong as you think it might from the equipment the soap is in, whether it be a foam cannon or a power washer soap injector. This just means either you need to put more soap in there or you need to rinse a little closer. Uh, you don't wanna be able to write messages to people in the vehicle after you've finished washing down, especially with the two-step process. That means the soap is either way too weak or the rinse needs to be closer. This is a video I did, uh, uh, going back a little bit. And this is at low pressure because it's through a downstream injector in this particular instance. So it's not, it wasn't really foamy or anything. So you mitt down the vehicle, you go to rinse. Generally, I'm kind of rinsing, you know, top down-ish, you know. But that's the, uh, that's the goal when you're doing any kind of physical contact wash. You want to get the soap off there and it saves time to rinse from the top down but you spent a lot more time mitting the thing, you know. This is a wash where I put on the, this is Liquid X that I was using, which is not a touchless soap. So really you would put this on here and then you would mitt it down. But you know, this was a long ways away and unfortunately, you know, these guys don't let their stuff get dirty in the first place. So I rinsed it top down because it was pretty. Look at that. Look how nice this looks. The reason I rinsed down here, like this top down, was because this truck wasn't dirty in the first place. I mean, look at the thing, it's perfect. We're just showing what it looks like to use one of our wash bays, you know. So many of our customers take such great care of their trucks, you don't really get a chance to see them rolling around dirty. So, uh, you know, hopefully we'll be able to get some really dirty trucks in front of the camera once our wash bay opens up. Ours is gonna look kind of similar to this, honestly. Uh, it's gonna be pretty cool. There's a lot of different ways to do the rinse. I'd be curious to see what you guys think. Whatever works best in your situation. If you're rinsing top down after foaming on the soaps and you're finding it's working for you, then you're just saving time. You know, that's not a bad thing at all. You can get a good finish whether you rinse either way. It just really depends on all of the circumstances together and what you find in your own personal experience. But hopefully this gives you guys a little bit of a head start. And I would hope that, uh, you know, if you have any thoughts on it, you just leave me some feedback in the comments down below. I'd love to hear whether you guys rinse from the top down or the bottom up and what you think works the best in your experience.